Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the kitchen. It's been a while. This is episode 11. We had a big pause between 10 and 11 the whole month of June. Anyway, we are back and I am excited to make a one dish meal for you today. It seems like those are really popular with you. It is summertime here in the US, hot outside. So one dish meal sounds like a good plan. And this is one the guys are gonna like because it's made with sirloin steak. So it is a quick and easy pepper steak recipe. We're gonna serve it over rice. Let's take a look. Uh, the recipe calls for a pound and a half of uh, some sirloin steak, cut about a half inch thick. So, um, you know, quick and easy to fry it up. And then we're going to use some peppers, onions, tomatoes, which is an interesting ingredient. And then we're going to have a sauce that's made of beef, beef broth, flavored with soy sauce, thickened with cornstarch and a little bit of salt. So um, I am excited to make this meal and show you. I think it's gonna be colorful and nutritious. It's a big win. So let's get cooking. Well, hey, we changed quarters. I've got my cutting board set up. As with all things, it starts with chopping and preparing. So we have our two peppers that it calls for in the recipe. And actually this is from my Betty Crocker cookbook. It called for green peppers. But you know me, I like color, so I threw in a yellow one as well. They are supposed to be cut one inch or thereabouts. So I've got my green one cut up, get my yellow ones cut up as well. And then we will also be dealing with the onion, the garlic, and also we're preparing then our sirloin steak. So I'm gonna finish up my peppers here, set those aside and work on the onion. Alrighty, I need one cup of chopped onion. And if you've been watching Paula's Kitchen for a while, you guys, you've watched me chop onion many times. <laughs> it's a thrilling thing, isn't it? Meanwhile, you may have noticed that we haven't been doing a lot of shout outs as we're down on the strip because we're just too busy. But you know, as I'm standing here in my kitchen, I can do a shout out. Uh, we had a request. We were going to miss it by a couple days, but on July 5th, Lindsay had a birthday, and it's never too late to say happy birthday. Matthew clued us in, so happy birthday, Lindsay. We hope it was a great day for you. Alrighty, guys. Let me get into the chop. This is a sweet onion. As you know, I love these. So let me get going with the sweet onion, and we will get our one cup worth got my one cup measure handy right here so let me get mincing these and since it's going into this pepper steak they don't need to be super small whoops I love when the onions go flying across the room so we'll just do a coarse chop on these alrighty let me get going with this I'll finish this up and I'll be right back with you in a minute Moving on, I need one clove of garlic minced. So let me just move on with that guy as well. And again, if you've been watching Paula's Kitchen for a while, you know that I'm always mincing garlic, aren't I? <laughs> Kudos to my cameraman. He is doing his utmost to capture the mincing process. And this is not even an Italian recipe. All right, that's good. Next step, we're going to be preparing our sirloin and trimming that up. Okay, folks, I set my vegetables aside. They're all prepped and ready. Now I'm gonna work on the sirloin and basically all I wanna do is cut these into some serving size pieces. I wanna get rid of the fat and so on so that every single bite is just goodness. So let me start working on these a little bit. Just gonna kinda go around the membranes and, and the fat and just get to the steak. Picked this up at the grocery store yesterday. Things are starting to look, I won't say normal, but maybe a little more normal at our local grocery store these days. The shelves have product on them and that's a good thing. And I'm able to purchase sirloin, which is also a great thing. You can already, already tell that this is going to be pretty tasty and tender. 
I got a garbage bowl handy. You know who taught me that? Years ago, Rachel Ray on the Food Network. She always had what she called a garbage bowl right close to her when she was prepping stuff. And she just threw everything in the bowl and didn't have to keep running to the sink or the trash, which I think is a very clever technique. So let me just set that aside. I'm going to work on this other one. And once I have all this prepped, we're going to start assembling everything. And I'm also going to get my rice going. So we'll see you in a minute. The meat is ready. My veggies are ready, except for one. The recipe calls for us to throw these two tomatoes into the uh, pepper steak right at the end of cooking, but they need to be peeled. So you probably all know the simplest way to peel a fresh tomato is to throw it into boiling water for a minute or so and then plunge it into ice water. Let's try a quicker way. I looked it up on the web and said, what's the quickest, easiest way to peel a tomato? Let's do it. What, have you ever tried this before? No, but you know what? You look it up on the web. How could we go wrong? Okay, <laughs> this could be a blooper reel. First thing we need to do is to take off the stem, of course. No surprise there. You take your tomato, bear it with a fork. Okay. Turn on the fire to medium heat on your stove. Put the tomato one inch away from the heat serious? until it starts to bubble, which is supposed to happen within about half a minute or so. It will end up being quicker than boiling it and plunging it into ice water, which is not all that exciting when you're on camera. And? Even after it bursts. Going. Look at that skin. Look at that. That's what you want all the way around. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, that's, that's weird. Isn't that amazing? Okay. <sighs> amazing. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> all right. These need to be peeled and cut into eight wedges, which we will do when we're ready for them. But right now, let me get things prepped. We're gonna start cooking. All right, I'm prepped and staged. Let's move on. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get my rice going. Just, uh, I prefer white rice, love it with this recipe, but if you have brown rice, jasmine rice, any of those, they're all good. So I'm gonna get my rice water going. Wow, that burner was stubborn. <laughs> uh, one cup of rice for us. Uh, dry rice will make plenty for the two of us for dinner and even some leftovers. All right, meanwhile, let me get the pan going on my beef as well because we are ready to start cooking the beef. I'm going to start on kind of some medium heat. And uh, I'm just going to throw a little oil in the pan and we're going to brown the beef, the sirloin, on both sides. At this point, we're not doing anything to it. We're just going to cook it in some oil. Very much looking forward to putting all this together. It's a, not a traditional stir fry in that it's also going to have some beef broth incorporated in it. So um, it's gonna make kind of a gravy. I'm kind of excited to see how this is all gonna turn out. Alrighty guys, let me drop in some beef. See if we get a sizzle going on here. And it was funny, I'm really glad I got those two packs of sirloin because by the time I trimmed it, we needed that much to feed the two of us. We talk all the time, Dale and I, that all the really good beef, chicken, all the really good meats, they go down to the strip. <laughs> no surprise there. What smells better than sirloin cooking, unless maybe it was cooking in butter? <laughs> All right, let me get this browned on the one side, and then what we're gonna do is flip it. We're gonna season it with a little salt and finish it. Uh, and then we'll move on with our vegetables. Never one to waste time. While the meat is browning on the first side, let me also peel these tomatoes. Boy, this is difficult. 
Look at this. <laughs> wow. This is so fun. There, that guy. He's pretty much done. So all I have to do is take off the middle here. Done. And I'm just going to cut that into eight pieces. Look at this. Same thing. How much fun is this? When I was a kid, we, we had a huge garden. And uh, my dad grew a million tomatoes. And we canned them every summer. And we definitely used the boiling method to take the skins off. Look at these. These are wonderful. I'll just cut these into eighths. And it'll make a big squirty mess, but that's okay. All right, you get the idea. Let me then go check my meat. Alrighty, it is definitely ready to turn, you guys. We've got a little bit of char on them, and they start to smell really great. Now, once I turn them to the second side, I am to sprinkle them with one quarter teaspoon of salt, just a little bit of salt. So, I've got my salt right handy here. Measure off a quick quarter teaspoon and sprinkle. And then once this side finishes, I will sprinkle, flip them one more time and sprinkle with salt. Alrighty, meanwhile, my rice water is boiling. Let me drop the rice in. Give that a quick stir. That goes down to simmer for 15 minutes. It's your typical boiled rice, steamed rice, I should say. All right, taking note of the time, which sometimes I forget to do. <laughs> 15 minutes on that. All right, guys, cameraman, follow me here. Let me finish this other tomato. So we have a total of 16 pieces of tomato that are going to go into our pepper steak recipe. Yum! This is getting done on the second side, so let me flip these over and I'm going to do the other quarter teaspoon of salt for seasoning on these guys. And then we are ready to toss in the onions and continue on with the cooking process. Let me grab my salt. Another quick quarter teaspoon here. There we go. Sprinkle. All right, that's that. Now, it calls for the onions to go in the pan, and actually the instructions say to just go ahead and slide the steak off to the side, and but leave it in the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and just toss the onions in. Even though it's a sweet onion, I think it's overcome my poor cameraman a little bit today, has it not? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to cook the onions for a little bit till they start to get a little bit on the tender side, and then we're going to add our liquid ingredients, and basically we're going to tenderize the steak by cooking it with a lid on for a little while. So these onions are going to pick up that great steak flavor. Let me get some of this brown goodness off the bottom of the pan, mix it in with them. Everything about this just is kind of a manly meal. It's uh, those great, bold, hearty flavors. All right, let me cook these for, oh, let's go for five minutes, and then I'll, I'll come back and check them.
Take a look at these onions, you guys. Oh my gosh, we need smell-o-vision again. This is amazing. All right, as I said, now we're gonna add some liquids and we're going to put a lid on this and cook it for a little bit. So liquid number one, I need one cup of beef broth. Now I happen to have some beef broth in a can, but if you don't have that, you can just make a cup of beef bouillon with a bouillon cube. That will work as well. Then I also need three tablespoons of soy sauce. So it's gonna have just a bit of an Asian flair. And then I need to go grab my garlic and drop that in as well. Let me stir this up. And of course, because those things are cold, it stopped sizzling. I'm gonna bring my meat back around to the center of things and stir my onions and garlic around. And then I'm going to tightly cover with a lid and it's going to simmer for 10 minutes in this liquid. Meanwhile, my rice is steaming away and once this happens, we will only have two more steps to do, which is we'll throw our peppers in and they cook about five minutes or so. And then at the very last, we'll throw in the tomatoes and that's it, we'll be ready to eat. So I will see you in 10 minutes. All right, you guys, 10 minutes went by and it happened to dovetail with the completion of the rice as well. So I just want to quickly fluff the rice with a fork. That is beautiful. I love it when it doesn't clump. That is ready to eat, beautiful steamed rice. And the next step was to take the lid off and toss in the next ingredient, which is my beautiful red and, I'm sorry, red, what am I saying? Green and yellow peppers. So I have put those in and they are down in the juice cooking. So that's gonna be about five minutes for them to just tenderize a little bit. Meanwhile, I need to make a thickener, which I just did off camera. It is the usual thickener for soy sauce based sauces. It is two tablespoons of cornstarch, one quarter cup of cold water. I've got that ready and standing by because once my peppers are done, I'm going to go ahead and toss my thickener in and we'll get that juice thickened up into a gravy. Five minute timer just went off and now we've got the smell of peppers kind of invading our senses. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. Next step, we're going to add this cornstarch and water mixture, which of course, just in the five minutes it already settled. Doesn't that always happen with cornstarch? So the instructions are, we're going to pour this in and we're going to stir constantly until this gravy thickens up and boils. And then we're just gonna boil it one minute. So I'm expecting this not to take too long, but you know with cornstarch, you have to stir constantly. You don't want lumps. And I have to say, I am so pleased that I chose to do both the yellow and the green pepper because once we throw the tomatoes in, I defy you to not say this is gonna be a beautiful dish visually. Look at this, boiling already. So it says stir and boil for a minute. So I'll just keep an eye on the clock right here on my stove. And we don't need a timer for a minute. And then the last step is going to be to toss in my tomato wedges just to heat those through. And we will be ready to plate this up. And I would imagine after this uh, sirloin steak cooking in this juice and gravy for a while, it's going to be super tender and flavorful. What are you thinking, the man behind the camera? Are you looking forward to this? I can't wait, it smells great. <laughs> and looks just as good. It's, the smell is unbelievable. Yeah, it absolutely is. We, you guys always talk to us about the smell of vision and this is a case where you would really wanna be here for this smell. I'm just going to wait till that clock turns to 446. It just did. All right. I'm going to put in my very last ingredient, which is the tomatoes. Toss those around just to heat those through for a minute or two. And we are going to have dinner. You could see how this would feed a crowd. So we bought about a pound and a half of the sirloin. And I probably had to waste, 
uh, a quarter or a third of a pound of it in fat and so on. But look at this pot of food it made because of all of the vegetables. Um, and once you toss that over rice, this will definitely feed a bunch of people. Next up, we're gonna eat. All right, you guys, I know I say this every time we sit down to dinner after we make one of these meals, but does this food not look incredibly delicious? Come on, it's so beautiful to look at and it smells just as good. It's time for that man behind the camera to set it down and let's eat. Or should I try it first? How about I give it a bite? I'll tell you what, I want a yellow pepper first, so that's what I'm going for. I'm going for the pepper. Wow. I'll say it, one of the best things I ever made. Good. Seriously, really, really great, great flavor. I can't wait to cut into the sirloin. All right, you guys, make this. Okay, Paula, you Austin. outdid yourself again. Well, thank you very much. That really was a big success. And I'll tell you the highlight. It was the tomato. <laughs> <laughs> the tomato's really good. I absolutely love that whole getting the skin off the tomato thing. But anyway, that really was not a hard recipe, you guys. Um, the trick is to prep all your veggies and everything ahead of time, toss it in the pan, and follow the timing. But wow, great, great, great results. Delicious. E episode 11. Big thumbs up. In the can. Right. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Pepper and garlic taste on this. I mean, seriously, I got to try a pepper. That has an unbelievable taste. Mmm. Two thumbs up. Great stuff.